in the Cook family. Papa has such a high esteem within his community because he was a man of many, many skills, a few of these being a painter, entrepreneur, union rep of the, sec of the Secretary of City Workers, waiter at, the pri at private parties, and the first ballroom in Chattanooga, the number one ballroom in Chattanooga, the American Legion. Cupolo worker. <laughs> 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 deacon, deacon at the Rose of Sharon Baptist Church, and most importantly, a present and loving father to his nine children, from his high school sweetheart, Genevieve John Jordan Cook, my grandmother. Papa's father, Reverend John Cook, was widely known for building and founding three churches in Chattanooga, one of them being Rose of Sharon, so it came to no one's surprise to the origins of how JT's popularity and cherishment to, to be in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Daddy's statue was elevated Daddy's statue was elevated because of who his father was, added my mother via cell phone, JT's ninth and youngest child, out to East Cook, 2018. Born in Chattanooga, May 22nd, 1901, Reverend John Cook, John Clifford Cook instilled the importance of God and faith in his son, and on a few occasions when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came to Chattanooga, Reverend Cook sheltered him during his stay. Generational impact and admiration were custom within the Cook family. Reverend John Cook was favored and deeply missed by his grandfather, John, such as my grandfather, John Thomas Cook. The message I got from getting answers how and why Papa held such high esteem within, within the family taught me that with every life and life in my life especially, in my life especially, I need to leave an impact and have life and have a life that I know I did was right and was influenced by others within that journey. In addition, I also wanted to learn about my grandfather's achievements on this um Is that gum? Yeah. On this word document just like oh, yeah. What was Pop that? Pop -pop. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> Daddy? about my grandfather's achievements and values during his lifetime and the answers to these questions were quite moving especially when it came to papa's viewpoint on hard work and family work hard always work hard always be the best and do everything to the best of your ability remarks my mother as i asked her what values my grandfather instilled in the cook family she adds he really believed in family no one could argue in front of him you had to hug out hug it out with each other and say you were sorry he was the only child that's why he had so many children he didn't want any children being lonely like he was church love one another love god and no fighting added my aunt leah's jt's second second to last daughter in the cook family he made us stand hug hold each other until he felt that we knew how to accept and love each other if he overheard us arguing, said my Auntie Gwen, JT's first daughter. Wow, everybody said the same thing. <laughs> a family that prays together stays together, yep. poses my Auntie Nene. As I analyzed these notes, it seemed that in unison, my granddad's message was so clear to me, and I couldn't help but feel amazed on how through a single person, a single man, certain values were instilled, carried, and remembered by many. And I noticed this from my relatives' testimonies. Next, I wanted to discover... A, a sense of what the times were like in which my grandfather was alive living within America. It was discovered that my granddad was smack dead in the center of the Jim Crow, segregation, and civil rights era. Mm. It was a time in which my cousin Andre recalls you had to pay your toll on the bus, step out, enter through the back, and head to the colored only section, yet having just paid the same amount as a white man. Mm. Andre Logan, 2018. It was a time in which you didn't want to cause too much trouble or ruffle too many feathers, said my mother. Lynching was a dwindling number. Lynching was at a dwindling number at Chattanooga, Tennessee. However, if there was a lynching, it would be over the Market Street Bridge, so so everyone could see, stated my aunt, which was young, who was young and present during those times. Mm. Very Joy in 2018. It wasn't too rare to see nigger don't get caught after dark, graffitied and tagged around the community. It was a time in which JT's eldest children and him himself had to navigate within a society that kept the water fountains, washrooms, and schools segregated between whites and blacks. Yes. Towards granddad's adulthood, JFK's assassination was fresh on America's mind. African Americans looked down on the ways of their grandparents who practiced the traditions of a slave. Education was key, but it, so was work. Most of the time after eighth grade, 
boys were pressured to, and convinced to work and labor for their family instead. Lastly, hospitals were not trusted by black families due to the exposure of the Tuskegee experiments aimed towards unknowledgeable black men, black male patients. Uh -huh. Papa was active in the civil rights movement. As a form of protest, Papa refused to enlist his sons in the army. My mother revealed, you go over there and fight and die and come back to get treated just like a second class citizen. No, he refused. He was scrutinized too. He was your modern cabinet. Hey! In relation to my lifetime goals and his alignment and my alignment with my grandfather's, for the life of me, I assumed that there must have been at least one or two doctors in my bloodline. However, it was revealed to me by my mother that this was not the case. I, Tyus Magruder, God willing, will be the first to dream towards to, to dream towards the path of medicine. It was my grandfather's dream first to pursue medicine, according to my relatives who were close to my grandfather yep. during his early years. That's what he did. But he was growing up, he always wanted to be in the medical field. Mm -hmm. He even worked he even worked at one of the hospitals as an elderly, stating my third cousin yeah, Andre. He did. He did. He I remember did. once when my Brother well, Charles know, got sick oh, with high fever. Your try. granddad told my mother, this is what you do. Yeah. You put ice, water, and alcohol in the pan and give Charles a bath, reminisce Andre. However, mm -hmm. in a time when teen pregnancy was common within America, my grandfather put those dreams beside him when he discovered him and his high school sweetheart, Genevieve Cook, were having their first son, John Thomas Cook Jr. Mm -hmm. It takes an admirable man to set aside his dreams, knowing that providing for his family comes first, especially when it comes to the love John Thomas Cook had for Genevieve mm -hmm. Jordan Cook. My grandfather loved mother through 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, <laughs> but my grandmother had a boyfriend. Papa waited for Genevieve and Willie to break up. Oh. The custom between Willie and Genevieve was that they would always hold hands walking home from school. <laughs> Once granddad noticed that they were no longer walking home together, he made his move. <laughs> 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 granddad was super close to Genevieve's sister Alice yeah. and he asked her for a hookup in terms of getting a date with Genevieve and it was then that he it was then that it was revealed that Genevieve had, was not interested granddad's name was Pee Wee back in the day and Genevieve will always say I don't like that short big head little boy according to my mother <laughs> however he would not take no for an answer he was always there eventually wearing down wearing her down two or three years Morris. he will master said my mother by 10th grade high school he was his girlfriend she was his girlfriend it's unique one of the it's unique one of the a kind stories that granddad of granddads that revealed to me how amazing his personality and spirit was papa would, would be 85 years old as of 2018 as a man that mm. said very little and when he did have something to say it had thought to it his words was gospel stated in my auntie mm. Nene. papa was a hard working man as well he was never known to have only one job. Even if he was not working, he would use his skills to earn, earn some money and put a smile on someone's face. For example, through painting and tap dancing. He was the last to strike some Tap dancing? Really? Daddy can tap dance. You not the first one? Oh, look, look golfer. Okay. He was the last to strike somebody. It was nothing for him to sit you down and talk to you, and those talks will last for hours. Oh God! He would force his values and ways. He would force his values and ways, but he was a gentleman. Never whooped anybody. He didn't have to. His words demanded your respect. However, he was very popular. Very popular around town. Very funny. People loved to see him in town. Like driving down the street, he will always lecture. Like, oh my God, Daddy, be quiet. Reminisce, my mother. You had to listen to it, though. That Come man was a man, master right? of the oratorical skills. Come on, have it. Around the time, around the time of Papa's <laughs> passing, <laughs> he had to be castrated, and he believed that he had lost his manhood, and he hated the thought of living. He didn't think Grandma would respect him and value him. He hated that. He made Grandma swear not to tell a soul until he passed. After two months of the operation, Papa passed. When my mother was 15 years old, my father, my granddad, her father, my granddad passed from the tolls of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is not, is not the death sentence as it is now. Early detection is not practiced during Papa's time. There was a time, there was a large outpouring of love that everyone had for Papa. Before his death, my granddad created a support group for workers who passed in which the relatives of the deceased would get care packages and groceries. Oh, so when the day came and when in which granddad passed, there was a surplus of groceries and gifts. There were so many flowers received from loved ones that there were so many that grandma had to put them out on the driveway in the front yard with the number of flowers that were building up. This is how much Chattanooga cherished my grandfather. 
It was a badge of honor if your wife didn't have to work. And my granddad made sure that grandma didn't have to work or sweat beyond taking care of the house and the children. He, he wanted to do something for his wife because he had all those children. He didn't want to be a burden to her, remarked my aunt, his daughter, until he is. With the healing and time spent mourning the loss of such a wonderful man, it brings comfort to know that with John Thomas's passing, he left so much with relatives, his children, and their and me and him are. Additionally, it makes me wonder why it took me so long to discover as much as I discovered about him now, knowing that all I had to do was ask about him. <laughs> I don't know, I did not know that I am I am not as half as multi-talented as my grandfather was. I didn't know how genuine he was, and I did not know that he was the only child just as I am. I look at the world differently, <laughs> knowing that if J John Thomas could deal with life at the time and period that he did, the circumstances in which he did, and with the responsibilities that he did, nothing is, is impossible when it comes to the possibilities and dreams I want to accomplish in life. Even though with the years to come in my youth and adulthood left for me, I look at the world differently knowing that if John Thomas could deal with the life and the time period in which he did, the circumstances in which he did, and with the responsibilities that he did, Nothing is impossible when it comes to the possibilities and dreams I want to accomplish in life. Even though with the years to come to my youth and adulthood left for me to live, I can now say as I look in the mirror, as 